Darrell Jazz Johnson here with uh, Bleacher Reports. Howard Beck. Howard, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. This is like a holiday for us, the first day of the NBA season. What are your thoughts on the 2014-2015 New York Knicks? Well, I think this is a transition year for them. I've said this several times that, you know, you bring in a new team president, Phil Jackson, and a new coach, Derek Fisher, a new offensive system, and several new players, really. Um, it's still the same core group, but they've made a lot of changes, and, and the biggest changes, I think, are just more philosophically. Who's running the organization? What direction this is going to go? And Derek Fisher, as a rookie coach, implementing a system, trying to find his sea legs as a coach, all of this is going to take time. So I think, you know, Nick fans should probably keep their expectations fairly moderate, at least in the short term. I think it could be a struggle, especially early on as they're adapting to this new system. We've seen J.R. Smith in the preseason clearly struggle. And um, it's a transition year. They clearly are looking forward to all that cap room next summer. They still need that second star to put next to Carmelo Anthony. Um, you know, there's, you know, as long as it's just Carmelo and a lot of like good but not great players, it's going to be a struggle for them. And so I don't know this is a playoff team right now. I think they could get there. But I think as the season opens, they are uh, outside of that field based on just what they have on the roster. Two Knicks are entering their final, the final years of, well, two Knicks that I want to talk about are entering the final years of their contract. Iman Shumpert and Amari Stoudemire. What type of season? We it, it, it seems like we've been waiting for that breakout season from Iman, and it seems like we've been waiting for Amari to be healthy. What do you? What can we expect from him this season? Well, you know, Amari, given where he was a couple of years ago, I think has you know made tremendous strides, kind of adapting to this stage of his career where, you know, he's not going to be able to play the minutes he used to. He's not going to be able to have the same level of activity and play every back to back or play four games in five nights. There are limitations on him, but within those limits. Amari has proven he can still be very, very effective, at least as an offensive player. Defense has always been a little bit of a question mark and will remain so. But Amari has shown himself to, to be, I think, an asset uh, with still, obviously, on the pick and roll and with his low post scoring. He's, he's worked very hard, obviously, on that aspect of his game. So he can still be very important to this team in that regard. Um, you know, it, it's unfortunate we'll never get to see the Amari Stoudemire that the Knicks acquired uh, back in 2010 again. But that's what happens. You know, knee injuries, they, they catch up to you after a while. He's been through a lot. But all credit to Amari Stoudemire. The guy has worked as hard as anyone, and he's a very proud guy. He has tried to get every ounce, uh, you know, every, every ounce of productivity out of his body that he can, given everything that he's gone through. And Iman Shumpert, this is the last year of his rookie contract. We've seen potential from him since his rookie season. Is this that breakthrough year for Iman? I think this will be a breakthrough year for Iman Shumpert. Um, I think he now is working with a coaching staff and an organization that's going to, I think, define what he should be much better than maybe the last administration did. Um, I think that the, the potential we've seen from him has been hindered by a number of things, a little bit of dysfunction within the team. Obviously, the ACL surgery a couple of years back, his own youth and, and trying to figure out what his identity is as an NBA player, what he should concentrate on. I think Derek Fisher will do a lot to help him gain that confidence and that structure that he needs to decide, okay, this is what you are as a player. We know he has fantastic defensive uh, abilities and instincts. He could certainly be a much better offensive player. He's got to be able to play off the dribble better. He's got to become a better passer, just have that court sense. His shot kind of comes and goes. This is a pivotal year, though. Any, any guy entering the final year of his rookie deal and you're going to be hitting uh, restricted free agency, it's important. So that will help drive him, too. And, um, you know, I think we'll see the best of him on Shumpert this season, and then it will be a matter of can the Knicks keep him. A guy named LeBron James left Miami and went to Cleveland along with Kevin Love, but there are people who think that the team the Knicks are playing tonight, the Chicago Bulls, are as good, maybe even better. What are your thoughts on who will come out of the East? I picked Chicago from the get-go. I think the Chicago Bulls are the best team in the Eastern Conference, and I give them the edge over Cleveland for a number of reasons. I mean, it's, you know, LeBron, Love, Kyrie Irving, it's hard to compete with that kind of star power, but chemistry matters. The Chicago Bulls are a team that has been together for several years. This core group has been together. They've got the continuity. That's a huge advantage. It's important in the NBA. People under, underrate, you know, talent matters, but having the familiarity with guys, having that chemistry and that trust that's built over years, is hugely important. The Bulls have much better depth by far than the Cavaliers do. 
and they've got one of the best defenses in the NBA over the last several years running. You know what you're going to get from this team every night defensively. The Cavaliers have no defensive reputation whatsoever, and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love have never been known as defenders, and neither of them have ever been in the playoffs besides. So, you know, LeBron James is the ultimate equalizer. He will make everybody there better, but it's going to take the Cavaliers time to maximize that big three. And these guys, the Bulls, are already there, and I'm not worried about Derrick Rose's health anymore. I know that people are gonna keep throwing that asterisk up there. The guy looks like he's back to me. And they also added Pau Gasol. They brought over Nikola Mirotic. They've got some really great depth here. I think the Bulls are the favorite in the East. Final question, Western Conference. I can probably put five, six, seven teams in a hat, and you pick one out and say this is going to be the winner, but who do you think will will survive the East and make it to the NBA final? I mean, this is the time of year where we all get pinned down and like, all right, pick somebody. So if I have to pick somebody, I'm going with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I picked them before Durant went down. I'm going to stick with it. He'll be back. They'll be fine. Um, they may, you know, the record may suffer, but they'll be there when it comes to the playoffs. Um, you know, San Antonio could be right back there, and I wouldn't rule them out. But getting to the finals three straight years is difficult. It takes a toll. Every run takes its toll. Popovich has been masterful in managing minutes and games and everything else, but it may catch up to them. And if it catches up to them, I think the Thunder are the team that's best positioned to overtake the Spurs. The Clippers should be in the conversation. And then you drop down just a slight, slight bit. I think the Warriors, if everything breaks right, and if Steve Kerr's offense unlocks the potential of that team, the, the, the Warriors have a fantastic uh, starting five. Bench, not so great, but there's there's a lot of potential there too. Dallas made a lot of improvements over the summer, so the West, as always, is going to be brutal and it's going to be a fascinating race. Thanks a lot for your time, Howard. Absolutely, anytime. Appreciate it.